Yeah, don't mind that. That's just my old machine powering up in the background, you know? No. Uh, that's, I like the sounds that they got in this game. It's really clever. Um... Uh, let me just make sure I've got my chat bot at the ready um, just so it moderates the channel just in case people post things they shouldn't be posting uh, alright so here we've got um, a whole bunch of puzzles. Uh, for each puzzle there's multiple program slots. Uh, I apparently haven't solved Interrupt Handler yet. Let's give it a shot. Read input from the four inputs. Write the input number when the value goes from 0 to 1. Two interrupts will never uh, change in the same input cycle. Oh, so I have to write one, two, three, or four out to this output. Um. <laughs> All right. All right, see you around. Take care. So uh, I need to print out one, two, three, or four based on which one of these has an interrupt. Um. So how am I going to do this? Um, I need to move up into the accumulator. Um, oh, I have to keep track of when I've got to jump, first of all. So let's start over here. <clears throat> um, so... Here I got it. There we go. And if we have a value equal, to, oh, we have to keep track of the last value as well. Write the input number when it goes from zero to one. All right, so uh, everybody starts at zero as their initial input. So I'm going to have labels 0 and 1. Um, and if we're equal to 0, we jump 0. Um, and here we move up into the accumulator. Uh, uh, jump non 0 back to 1. Okay, and we need to move uh, zero down. Um, sorry, move one down, move uh, zero down. Have I missed anything? So this moves up into the accumulator. For equal to zero, we jump back to zero. Um, get it. Uh, so move zero down has to be the first command. Uh, so 
for non-zero, jump back to one. Meanwhile, while we're looping on ones, um, something like this. So we start at zero, output zero. Um, move up into the accumulator. Uh, so move in dot three into the accumulator. And then if it's equal to zero, um, go back uh, <laughs> hmm. uh, go back to start. Okay. Let's try that. So I'm a cycle late on this. So we got, yeah, I'm a single cycle late. So I shouldn't start by printing zero. Um, if I try this. I'm still a cycle late here. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, I have... yeah. Um, this is TIS-100. This is playing with assembly language. Uh, the manual can be found online if you search for TIS-100 manual but it greatly resembles assembly code. Um, it's a great Steam game, in my opinion. And then... Let's see. So I'm going to need a one label here. <laughs> uh, move three down loop um, uh, jump not zero back to loop oh uh, I'm gonna encounter problems there too um, the jump not zero to one. to figure out what to do to correct this logic here. Um, so this takes the input from up, puts it into the accumulator register, prints a zero, and then jumps back to the start. Except when you uh, are changing... Uh, maybe I need more jumps. Maybe that's the deal. Um, I mean, I could do some magic down here to correct the sequence, but I want to try to get it. Uh, I want to try to over optimize this. Let's see. You no, know, let me just start over. So. Uh, one thing we're going to end up doing somehow is moving up into the accumulator. Um, and then... Let's 
Let's see. So I'm going to need a one label here. <laughs> uh, move three down. Loop. Um, uh, jump not zero back to loop. Oh. Uh, I'm going to encounter problems there too. Um, the jump not zero to one. going to continue printing zeros until it needs to jump here and then print a one or a three. Um, uh, and what do we do here? So we're moving up into the accumulator. Uh, jump not zero back to the loop. But somewhere in this I need to print a zero if I'm... Yeah. What a mess. <laughs> a glorious mess. Okay, so I just need to make sure I print the right number of zeros and threes and such. And I can accumulate results where I so choose. Um, So, I mean, I guess I could try to write this the same way as I wrote the top. One, yeah, no, I get it, I get it. Um, jump start. Maybe I make this one part back there. Because so that only happens once. And uh, I'm just getting lost in counting. Maybe I do need to do something later on that's more sophisticated and just make this part really simple up here. Let's move up into the accumulator. Um, oh, wait. Wait, no, so... Yeah, write the input number when it goes from 0 to 1. Um, so necessarily it's a lot simpler. The only thing I need to check for is was I 0 and am I going to 1? Uh, I don't need to check like was I 1 and am I going back to 0? That's not so concerning. Um, There's special opcodes that are used for jumping too. I could consider you well, that'd be dangerous stuff. But there's fancy stuff you could do. Um like here. Where my loop happens, I could have Yeah. I think that's actually the intended solution, which is crazy, but it's cool. So, okay, so at the one, we're going to say, yeah, we know we're going to have to print out a three here, but add up into the accumulator. Um, I think you jump based on accumulator instruction. Most of the time... Um, yeah. 
Yeah, now that's just getting complicated. Uh, but you could say jump X number of instructions based on what our input was. Um, <laughs> Let me try something more complicated over here. So, move one into the accumulator. No, I don't like that already. Move, start. Move up into the accumulator. Um, I guess, yeah, if we do have a 1, you have to jump to 1. And when we jump there, we have to uh, print that. Um, let me try this. So, we have to move up into the accumulator again. Yeah, and I don't know, I just, I'm... actually that's, okay, that's the asymmetry here, is that we don't need to make printing the first instruction in each loop. Uh, so I can get rid of this instruction. And... Oh, but the, the deal is I need to print one only the first time we have a one. Not every time. have to print the we have to print one else we have to print zero I, I keep getting stuck on this um, so something about this is just being challenging for me yeah this is basically assembly um, you take these inputs, you try to generate this output, and you do so using the TIS-100 language, which is basically assembly. It's a really slick looking game. Um, it's kind of more accessible than what I did in my computer programming, I'm sorry, my uh, computer architecture class. This is way simpler than the instructions I was working with there but it provides its own unique challenges, which is kind of refreshing. Um, so... Uh, zero down. And then if we have a non-zero value, we jump back to loop. And you can do these sorts of things. We say um, move left in, into accumulator, add up into accumulator. I'm oh, sorry, add up and then move accumulator to the right. Here I can say move up to the left. So here I want to move it right. Uh, and here I can say. Um, 
move left into accumulator, add up, add right, move accumulator down. And so if I just have some kind of loop in each one of these, something like this, they, they really did a fantastic job coding this interface um, just to make it really convenient to type. Oops, I should just pause it here. So in.3 is running way faster than the rest. We see that, right? So let me try copying this into slot 3. And we can run this again. And lo and behold, in trying to demonstrate why it doesn't work, um, I got a working program here. So, yeah. Victory! Holy moly. Um, so, yeah, you see, one of my friends also plays this game, apparently. My program's more optimized in terms of cycle counts. Uh, well, it's got the same number of nodes. And I think it has fewer instructions. Um, but can I do better? Can I optimize this somehow? Probably. Um, that was pretty cool. I didn't expect that kind of success here, honestly. So, uh, yeah. Is there some way I can make this more efficient? Like here we see every time I'm printing out a value, I have to run four instructions. Um, so I move from the left, add from the top, add from the right. Um, and then move the result down. And maybe there's a more optimal way to run write some of this. Um, I'm not even going to bother with these top four cells right now because that was kind of cool. I'm just going to leave that be. Um, but if I could somehow... Well, I'm not sure that making this more optimal is going to do anything for me because we run eight instructions here. 8 there, 8, 8. Although it's probably 4 per bit, right? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, no, let me do some pipelining here. So we've got 204 cycles. 204 cycles. I don't know how many inputs this is, but I'm going to assume roughly 50. Um, instruction count statistics, 42. And yet I see some people have done better than 42. They've done a lot better. One person managed to do this with seven nodes, apparently. And so I'm kind of curious uh, how they accomplished some of these things. I might be able to cut one of these nodes out entirely. Oh. Hang on. Yeah, now this doesn't need to be here. Um, we cut that. And we just say move from right to down instead of move zero down. And that's waiting because this is moving down instead of left. So if you know that only one of these is going to interrupt at a time, um, yeah. Okay. As I was saying, if you know that only one of these will interrupt it in a given cycle... Oh, check that out. 
So I missed a result. And 4 is lagging a little bit behind somehow. Um, so why did this not work? Oh, because every time I print 3 down, I still need to get the instruction from the right. That's the deal. Um, this is a little more tricky. Uh, can I get rid of this space? Okay. I don't even need to... Uh, don't need anything complicated here. There we go. 197 cycles. 202, 198, there we go. So we got, we beat our record of 204, now we're at 202, we use 41 instructions instead of 42, and we use one fewer um, node altogether. Can we do better? Of course, of course we can. Um, so, uh, this gets simplified. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here, right? Move up to the right. It's now going to be over here. Or we're just going to say uh, move up to the right. That's it. And over here, instead of saying move down, we're going to say move right. Instead of this, we're going to say move one to the right. And move zero right. Okay, and similarly, this needs say move left into the accumulator, and there we go. And the reason I'm doing this move left into the accumulator is just to take the input from the left and consume it, so that it can go on to the next uh, instruction. All right, so I missed something. I definitely missed something here. Oh. Uh, there we go, that's better. So we got 196 cycles, 200 cycles, 195. Yep, all tests were successful. Um, we've now passed this in 200 cycles, which I guess is the maximum of the 196, 200, and 195. So my worst case was 200. Did this with seven nodes and 39 uh, instructions. Uh, could we do better? Well, it's going to be hard. Somebody managed to do this with fewer than 39. Um, I'm not sure how you'd optimize it further. How <laughs> how would you do this with fewer than 39 instructions? And I think uh, I do have 39, right? And that's ignoring the blank lines that are there just for formatting reasons. Eight. Nine, nine, eight. So that's thirty-four, uh, thirty-five, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. So yeah. Um, it would take a little bit of wizardry to improve upon this. Arguably, I could take this node out entirely and get go down to six nodes and just pipe everything through this way. Um, and have a super complicated routine in this node. Um, 
Oh, I forgot. The chess game's on the top right. Hang on, let me get rid of that. That's actually a bit distracting. That's not part of the game. Uh, sorry about that. Um, thanks for pointing that out. Alright, so... Um, I could probably stick the chessboard somewhere else here to be less distracting, but we don't need it. We're playing some TIS-100. Um, so yeah, I could pipe all these instructions, or have this add one, move it along this way, same move, I could have this add the values on the left and right registers, and then pump it down this way, and that would take out this node, but um, I think that would make the code more complex and slower. It'd be The way this is right now, it's hard to improve upon. I'm just wondering, what did I miss somewhere? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I done good. Oh, maybe this one could be improved. Yeah, in dot one, so the inputs are zero and one, right? And I'm trying to, um, so if my initial state is a zero, I can just say, print out whatever my input value was, um, or my accumulator. Just keep printing the accumulator until I hit a one, and then print the accumulator once, um, but then every time I hit a one thereafter, don't keep printing one. So I think that's the deal. That's room for improvement here. Move up into the accumulator. Because um, we're going to need to figure out, is that something that requires us to go back to the start? Um, move accumulator to the right. Um, and if we are equal to zero, go back to start. And this way we've already done um, that. And then we keep moving up into the accumulator and printing zero. Uh, and to clarify, I guess I didn't mention this earlier, but once we hit the end of the routine, it just goes back to up to the beginning. Just for convenience sake, it, you don't have to provide an explicit jump instruction to make it restart. Um, so, move up into the accumulator, and move it to the right, and if the value was zero, just go back up to the top, and then... Uh, I think this is okay. Yeah. So I removed an instruction. I removed actually two instructions. Um, so that's cool. Alright, we got 37 instructions now. And our worst case time of 199 cycles. That's definitely difficult to beat. Um, I'll take one last look at it, but I think that's probably as far as this is going for now. Um, further simplification, I don't know, there might be ways to make this faster, but ways that make it faster probably involve using as many nodes as possible. And that's not a design goal that I have at the moment. Um, let me see. So, Steam has some achievements I can try to unlock. Um, so, this puzzle is called Interrupt Handler. Is there an achievement based on Interrupt Handler? Uh, nope. Nope, there's none. 
Okay. So, I like the achievements, though. The achievements are great. Um, Alright, so I've unlocked uh, rows 3 and 4 of puzzles. Uh, some of these require you to solve more than others. This column apparently takes more work. It says, prepare eight more and then it will give you this puzzle. Um, so, Sequence Reverser has an achievement. Um, uh, it just says, solve it without ever writing to memory. Should we take a look? Sequences are zero terminated. Read a value. Oh, okay, so, it's, so you can. I wonder what happens when I use a stack memory node. I think it just aggregates values. Um, sequences are zero terminated. Read a value from in, reverse the sequence, and print to out. Um, so we're going to do something fancy here. Um, so I'm going to first start by failing it altogether. Uh, Up right. That's it for this. Move left down. Move up down. And I just want to see what happens when I try this. So this builds up a stack of values, right? Um, and so I want to find a way. Um, to obtain that sequence of values and get it reversed. So a stack memory node is useful because it builds up a stack of values which can be reversed, right? Um, I've never used one of those before, so that's kind of a new thing. Um, let me actually read the manual. View the manual. Okay, so manual says I don't know. Okay, all communications done through ports. Um, Not sure. Let me try something a little more advanced. So, what if I just operate through this? Okay. What if we say? Move up to the right. Just going to do this the simplest possible way. So, yeah, the stack memory node itself isn't isn't going to solve the issue. Just that um, we need to check if we have a zero, and if so, print the value. Um, so. How do we do such a thing? Just going to add tons of no, tons of do nothing operations here. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, and then down here we're going to say move up into the accumulator. Um, And 
Actually, I'm not sure how to do this. How do I reverse a stack, I wonder? I'm trying to figure this out. Um, you know, I don't have any ideas on reversing the stack at the moment. We're going to come back. Uh, we'll get back to that later. Signal multiplier. That sounds fun. Reads from A and B, multiplies them, prints the product to out. Okay. Well, that's fun. Um, okay. Well, let's start with our basic things that just allow us to take data and push it around. Hey, look, we got a few correct. <laughs> Ones where you're multiplying by one. We got multiplying by one down pretty solidly here. Uh, the rest, not so much. All right, so. Yeah, how do I get multiplication? out of instructions which don't have a multiply instruction. Um, all right, so up, down, move up to the right, move right down, here this is going to be move up to the right, move left down, um, and here's the cell where all the logic's going to have to happen. So, um, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, how do I know uh, when multiplication's done? This is a bit tricky too. So I'm attempting to use just the single stack memory node. Um, somehow I'm going to have to put some logic somewhere in this grid. Um, to say, take the value on the stack. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not sure I'm entirely getting it, but, um, <laughs> oh no. So we'll just use the letter Z. Um, actually, no, this is going to be what happens when we're done with the multiplication routine. Um, start, move left into the accumulator. Um, <sighs> yeah.
yeah, what do I do? Um, so I want to say I'm going to take the value from right. I don't get it. I'm actually really confused. These puzzles are harder than I thought. Uh, let's try a simpler puzzle, perhaps. Alright. Sequence peak. Sequences are zero terminated. Read a value from in. We're at the minimum to i. Or at the maximum to A. Sequences are zero terminated. All right, so I move up into the accumulator, move accumulator right, and move accumulator down. That's a way to um, this is just a generic move up down move up down move up down which I'm not going to be able to use anyhow but um, so at least I'm able to propagate the numbers okay so next I need to ensure that somehow we're identifying the minimum and maximum of a sequence. Um, so, to identify a minimum and maximum, we have to know when the sequence starts and ends. Uh, move up into the accumulator. Um, mm -hmm. Somehow we have to keep track of the previous value, so I guess this is going to have to function as... Oh. I'm going to try to keep this symmetric somehow, right? Let's focus on the maximum then. Accumulator. Um, move accumulator to the right. And... Um, just do that several times, however many times it takes. Um, actually, yeah, um, so we'll call this start. If we have a non zero value, go back to start. Else, move right down. Okay. Um, and then over here, uh, so we can do this a few times. Oh, but it has to remember the previous value. That's the deal. Um, So we're going to save the value that's currently in the accumulator to the backup register. Um, subtract the value that we get from the left. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Subtract the value that we have in the left. And then we have greater, equal, or not equal to zero or less than zero 
things that we can do. Um, so if we have a value that's um, uh, where do I go? <sighs> so in the one case, we'll just want to restore from backup. Uh, wait, what was the command to restore from backup again? Uh, let's look for our TIS 100 manual. Get that on my second display, on my mobile display. Uh, swap. So, uh, SWP restores the old value. Um, and eventually we're going to want to say move accumulator left. Um, so move zero into the accumulator. Well, I guess we start with zero in the accumulator. Um, This is an unconditional jump. It's not what we're looking for. Jump not zero loop. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about this entirely wrong. Uh, entirely wrongly. So we need to move left into the accumulator. Actually, this instruction could be saved for last. Uh, so this is how we want to end our program. Um, we've left into the accumulator. We have a zero. Uh, jump equal to zero to zero. All right. And if we don't have a zero, um, we want to. Uh, preserve the old value. And the next, I don't know. Sub left. Um, figure out if we have value greater than zero or not. kind of sticky, isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh. There we go. Subtract the value from the left. If we're positive, negative. Launch is getting really complicated. All because I wanted to keep track of what's the greatest value of a sequence. Um, 
So you want to yeah jump greater than zero to positive, in which case we need to restore the old value. use P for positive. Um, so if we get a positive value we need to sorry if we have a negative value we need to uh, replace the value with the new value. just visually here. I wonder if I could fit multiple instructions on the same line, but probably not. Um, so for negative we need to replace the value there's no jump greater than or equal to value instruction. Actually, uh, I keep equivocating here, but I keep, I'm trying to come up with the best way to do this. Um, sub left, if we're greater than zero, uh, hmm. Yeah, this is tricky. Fitting the instructions that solve this into a single cell is a pretty darn difficult. <sighs> Move left into the accumulator, jump equal to zero, zero, swap. Puts the old value back. Subtract the value from the left. For greater than zero, we need to replace the old value, or we need to uh, restore the old value. Uh, Move left, or yeah, move left into the accumulator. Oh, but it's too late by the time I've done that to see whether what the result was. So this is the point where I do need to do the comparison. Um. So for greater than zero, what we need to do is uh, swap and save. And then jump back to start. Uh, else we need to move left into the accumulator. Actually, yeah, This sh the first thing that should be done is just save the value that's in the accumulator. Uh, that way I don't need to do it each time up here, or down here. Uh, and... So something about this is inefficient. I know it, but I have to write this out. 
unfortunately, in order to be able to identify where the inefficiency is. Um, subtract from the left. Um, oh, and I'm still missing an instruction here, too. That missed instruction is um, right here. We've left into accumulator. That's so inefficient. Um, so subtract the value from the left. Uh, I guess I only need that there twice. Jumping not zero start. So let me just try this. Do I at least get correct results? No, I'm stuck. How did I get stuck? So Move up into the accumulator. Let me step this one at a time. So, it says a 73 in its accumulator. In fact, I think I could trigger debugging by putting breakpoints here. So we see that um, it says 14 in the accumulator, this has 73 in the accumulator, 58, 0 is in the accumulator. Oh, have I, am I stuck at this point somehow? I don't know why I would be stuck. Um, at any rate, let me try replicating this. Uh, see if I can get the maximum uh, on both of these here. Left, left, and then move left down. And let's run it. So, um, let's keep running. 58 zeros in the accumulator. So um, here we have, this is trying to write to the right, this is trying to write to the left. Um, somehow, how do I even get there? I guess I don't need to send zero twice. Um, a single zero suffices for sure. So jump not equal to zero, start. Um, I'm going to just call this part end. And 
say jump start unconditionally and jump equal to zero end. Is this going to work? All right, let's try that here as well. Um, move accumulator left. And just always jump to the start. All right, so I don't know. Okay, something's gone awry. It's trying to move to the right. It's trying to move to the left. Um. Since it's trying to print a value, I'm not sure why. We do have zero in the accumulator. It says zero, this is zero, this is 71. Which is the value we just read. At any rate, um... Okay, I am messed up. Uh, jump to less than zero and getting this part to be symmetric and find the minimum shouldn't be that hard. than zero and move right to accumulator swap jump. I mean it's the same damn thing, right? I mean, what am I missing? Just for parity's sake, I'm trying to make all the labels and everything line up. Um, yeah, no, the label name doesn't matter. Uh, whew, interesting. What am I missing? Cursor out of the way. Move right to accumulator, swap, jump S. Oh, the minimum that we start with is zero. That's the deal. So out of any sequence, um, yeah, we don't want zero to be the minimum. That's why I have to make different logic for this one on the left. It's because I we're going to compare zero to whatever and always come out with zero. Um, so this actually needs to have a different precondition.
think that's the largest value you can hold. Okay. So we got 58 out of that sequence. Admittedly, 58 is also wrong. Um, but it's closer. Uh, we should have come out with 14. Subtract the value from the right. Uh, let's try to stick with the same branching flow. Jump greater than ZG. Um, so, right to accumulator, swap and jump S. Okay, so this is anything but, um, anything but instructive the way I'm doing it. It might work, but uh, let me just keep my cursor over here where it's convenient to hit the run button when I'm ready to hit the run button. That's why the cursor keeps reappearing is because I keep needing to click that button. There's no shortcut key as far as I see. Um, okay, so... Well, I just, I'm going to need to figure this routine out separately. So, first step is we're going to always save the old value. And we're going to move um, the value from the right into the accumulator. Uh, sure, we can have a jump zero routine at the end. Uh, we're in, we restore the backed up value and move this to the right. and move 99 into the accumulator. That's fine. Okay, so what do I need to do? Yeah, but we can't guarantee that the minimum value is going to be the first one in the sequence, so... How do I reset this to... to do this comparison in a way that makes sense, I guess? Um, move right into the accumulator. This is going to be the end, is the swap and move. Um... Unfortunately, there's no read and branch command, which would be useful. Uh, I could try something different on the left. I could, s well, yeah, we might need more than one cell to do this. It's basically what this is coming to. Interesting. Um, so if we get a zero, we print out our value. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to reset the minimum thing. It's messy. Is there some way I can determine 
minimum and maximum without using uh, the move command. There's got to be some arithmetic expression that says the minimum is equal to and then some um, something. My problem, I guess, is that um, this, well, I could make this the first thing, is move 99 into here. Um, that's okay then. Okay, so if we have a value we need to preserve our old value before we lose it. Um, so, first we need to check, did we get a zero? If not, preserve the old value. Um, although, why am I doing any of that? Oh, I get it. This is my only way to get the old value out. Alright. Um, and then, yeah, we do have to negate uh, the value from the right. Or subtract the value from the right. Um, and yeah, if we have a less than zero value, we have to jump to L. It says we're going to move right into the accumulator, swap, and jump S. Else, we just need to read from the right, and then jump S. I'm pretty sure this is where I started. Yeah, this is how I got 58. So if we have less than zero value, um, what's my deal here? Okay, so we got 85 in the accumulator. Uh, so, yeah, 99 minus 14 is 85. Um, 85 is not less than zero, meaning that what we're gonna do next is uh, take the value from the right and save it. Yeah, I think I got this backwards somehow. Let's get 85. Backed up a, a 99 there. Got 15. And again, we backed up a 73. We backed up the 58 now. Yeah. So initially we got 99. And then we got 73 as our high, as the value in the accumulator. So why did that not work the first time though? Let me just look at everywhere we're calling save. All the save and swap commands are points where data gets transformed. So we got 99 and 0, and we got 99 and 99, and we got 99 and 14. Um, 
So the point of this is to fill both registers with 99. Yeah, in fact, why don't I just put the one breakpoint there? 99, 0, 99, 14, 73, 99. So, why is this not flipped? That's why I'm stumped about. How do we end up there? So, we got 14, subtract the value from the right, it's 85. Um, take the, oh. Take the value from the right. There's a timing bug here. There's some kind of timing bug. Got the value from the right is now in the accumulators. Fourteen. Fourteen is not zero. So we swap. So our four, our fourteen got chewed up. Oh, right, because it's trying to re remain remember the old value. Um. What gives? Move up to the accumulator, move it to the right and down. Where am I missing something? So a purpose of what we're trying to do here is first check, is the next value zero? If it is zero, just do the routine at the end where we move things to the right. Um, if it's not zero, um, restore the old value. Um, subtract the new value. This doesn't seem to be substantially different from what I'm doing over here. So subtract the new value. If we've got a value less than zero, jump to L. L says we're going to take the value from the right uh, and save it. This really shouldn't be necessary, but okay. Or if it is necessary, it should be necessary in both cases. Well, that wasn't so bad. Now, I already know there's room to improve this. I try to be really verbose the first time I write it, just so I don't make any mistakes. Um, That's pretty cool, though. Alright, so cycle counts, middle of the park, node counts, uh, typical value, instruction counts, uh, greater than the typical value. So what I did was slow. Um, I 
We're going to improve this a bit. So we're going to use one fewer uh, one of these. Okay, so we got seven nodes. Still roughly the same instruction count, but seven nodes is better. Um, now in terms of optimizing this, I think the routine done to get the minimum is actually a little more complicated. Uh, so that took me to 378 as opposed to where I had it the other way. The other way took how many cycles? Also 378. Okay, so it didn't actually matter. I thought this was more complicated, but apparently not. Um, so the question is, do I want to spend more time optimizing this, or do I want to move to a different challenge here? Uh, I think optimizing this further would work Require a different program. Um, one where the determination of is this the last thing, like is this the end of a sequence, is deter or is localized to its own module, and that's somehow used to figure out. I don't know. Um, I think we could do that later. I think that's pretty decent. Um, Let's look at image test pattern one. Sure, why not? Huh, somebody managed to do this with one node, or one cycle, or something. I can't exactly tell, but that's pretty amazing. Fill the image buffer with the specified target test pattern. Okay. Um, move one down. That's not quite it. All right, I should actually read up on the manual. So what populates the image buffer? Now, let me get the manual out. What do we have to say about the image buffer? Okay, apparently I can't read the PDF uh, using my keyboard. I can't text search it. Stack memory nodes, random access memory nodes, embedded interactive debugger, visualization module. And TAS100 contains a visualization module that allows programs programmatically create and display images, module contents, uh, you print out an X coordinate, starting Y coordinate, one or more color values, and a terminating negative value. So, to draw a single white pixel in the top left corner, you say 003 minus 1. All right. So if I were to say move zero down, move zero down, move one down, move minus one down. This oops oh oh three minus one would be the uh, right. So we got a white pixel in the upper left. Fill that with the specified target test pattern. Well, we need the entire thing to be white, right? So, um, okay, try. Do we have a way of drawing lines? Starting x coordinate, starting y coordinate, one or more color values, and a terminating minus one. 
All right, so do I need the terminating minus one? Do I really? Um, um, so we'll say loop. Jump loop. Run it. So you see that fills, and I've got an unconditional. Oh. Okay. So I can only draw one line at a time. Jump greater than zero loop. Move ten to the accumulator. Um, sub one. All right, so we're going to move some value into the accumulator. Actually, read the manual. The manual says that the dimensions of this are 36. Oh, it doesn't state the dimensions. The image console sandbox contains a larger visualization module, which is 36 by 22. So if I say 40 to the accumulator, is that going to be enough? Yeah. That's actually a 36 by 22 box. Um, maybe. We'll see. Okie dokie. Uh, coordinate 1, starting x and starting y. All right, so I think I want to start from the bottom. So is this 36 by 22? I can't tell. Is this how okay there's a line um, this is 36 by 16 perhaps or 17 or some number um, into the accumulator. All right. Um, okay, so just call this start instead of S. Sub one. This routine actually never ends, apparently. All right, so. Mm. 
We have 18 to the accumulator, 0 down. Subtract 1. Um, here we need to swap values and swap them again. That'll work. Oh, that's funny. All right, so I goofed. Um, I don't want to have too many swap commands inside this program. Accumulator down. Oh, that's too early. So, let's try this again, okay? So, we're going to move 18 into the accumulator. Um, um, move uh, zero down. Um, move accumulator down, swap. Okay, we're going to move 36 into the accumulator. Um, Jump greater than zero. Uh, greater than zero goes back to the loop. Move accumulator down. Move zero down. Move negative one down. Uh, jump to S. Let's try that. Okay, completely wrong. Perfect. Let's start with just 10 and 10. All oh, right, the colors, yeah, I need to print out. Uh, so we print out X starting X, starting Y, uh, colors, and then zero. So I got that completely wrong. Let's move 10 into the accumulator. Um, move uh, starting X down. Move Move accumulator down. We'll call this just a start. Um, <laughs> swap loop. This is going to be for a row. We're going to do this. Move 10 into the accumulator. Uh, move three down. In fact, let's mm. 
eventually we're going to move a negative one down um, and here what do we do subtract one uh, jump greater than zero um, greater than zero goes back to the loop Try that. What do we get? We got some weird funky O sequence here for sure. Oh, I've only got one swap instruction. Uh, let's try adding another swap instruction. That's more like it. Okay, that's a lot better. Um, now I just need to start with presuming there are 20 rows and 40 columns or something. All right, that works. We can do better. I think it's actually 36 by 18. Twenty-seven sixty-one. It's not too bad. Uh, one node is about as good as you can get, and twelve instructions is about average. Let's continue editing though, because I think I could do better than twelve. Um, how do I get a simpler program that does all this? Well, simpler can mean a lot of things. Um, so for example, uh, if instead of subtracting one, yeah, in fact, I could do a lot better here. I can unwind a loop. So that's how you unfold a loop. And then we'd only need to do the loop nine times. So yeah, that gets our cycle count down from, I think, whatever it was, to 1799. Kind of curious, what was it before I did that? What was it before I unwound the loop? So... Yeah, I greatly reduced the instruction set. Um, or the instruction count. I about halved it by just unwinding a loop. Um, if there's any way I could unwind a little bit further, that would probably greatly improve this. Yeah. I'm sorry. There's like 50% less instruction. So it used to be 2,700, now it's about 1,800. Um, I did increase the instruction count, but I think in my mind, the cycle count is outweighing the instruction count in my mind. Um, but what's the fewest instructions you could do this with, I wonder? What's the fewest instructions you could do this with? Um, basically, you need to print out a whole ton of threes and then a minus one and some values before that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure how to optimize that. Um, 
This is pretty cool, though. Oh, actually, yeah, if you wanted to optimize this, you'd want to use more than one node. That could really decrease your instruction count. So let me try another um, separate program for this. So here we're going to say uh, move left down, move right down. Mm -hmm. Move uh, 9 into accumulator, actually 36 into accumulator. Move 3 down. Sub one. Um, actually, this might increase the overall instruction count. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. All right, that's an unknown number. I'm gonna leave that untouched for now. Um, so, move three down. Um, jump greater than zero back to loop. Okay. So, our. S oh, hang on. I don't need. Yeah, our x coordinate's always going to be starting at zero. So this here can say move uh, 22, I think it was 18, into the accumulator. Um, loop sub 1, move accumulator left. So yeah, this I think does the same thing and has fewer instructions. Jump greater than zero to loop. go. So that's 11 instructions. Apparently there's a way to do it with fewer than 11. And there's one way to do it with a lot fewer than 11. I'm really curious about that. Um, yeah, could one generate a more minimal program that produces the same output? I don't know. Um, how can one do this with fewer than 11 instructions? We'll leave that painting for a little while. I'm going to go check on one thing. See, this takes just a little while to print out the entire image. Um, but I'm still trying to think, is there a faster way uh, to paint this buffer? Or a more minimal way to do it? Oh. So we print out all those threes, 
and then we print out a minus zero, a minus one, and a zero. Um, huh. <laughs> Maybe there's a way to somehow print out the minus one more cleverly. Um, Like this, how do I reduce the number of instructions to fewer than 11 and not lose tons of functionality? I've got separate x and y counters. Maybe I just... I don't know. Maybe I don't need the minus one to end the sequence. Maybe we just wait until the buffer overflows. That could be fun. So, yeah, let me try that. Um, actually, I'm not going to scrap this program. I'm going to try this on a separate node. Move zero down, move zero down. Uh, loop. Move three down. Um, so apparently I can't overwrite the image buffer or something stupid, which would be cool. Um, I could consider just um, move zero down, move zero down, move three down. Um, I could consider doing something like this. And maybe there's a way. Um, I'm not sure. Then I could just start this at each x coordinate and each y coordinate. Um, sub one, move. Accumulator right, and move accumulator left. Um, maybe this is doable. Why doesn't this work? Let's start at ten. I'm ending up with 12 instructions when I'm done with this, because I need a loop on both. So yeah, this isn't the way to go. Um,
Okay, so apparently writing to this thing has no effect. I guess that's just for flavor text or something. I'm not sure. See, I think I've done well. Um, let's erase this just to indicate that it's not there. So 1799 is my record. And 11 is my record there. Image test pattern 2. Alright, here we go. A checkerboard. Segment list. Copy. Yeah, that's not where I wanted to copy it, by the way. Um, so we'll erase this. Actually, no. Let's start with the other one. Well, the other one's actually a little trickier. Yeah, let's go back to the list. Oops, this is the wrong one. Uh, image test 2. Turn to the list. And go back here. I want 11 instructions. I'm going to copy. Back to the list. And paste that other part here. And we see it, it's absolutely incorrect. Or at least it never achieves the final state that's desired. Um, so, do a little bit of magic. And we see, yeah, here we get a checker, except it's obviously off by one. Um, So to address that, we do a little bit more unwinding. So you see where I say this is loop? This is now going to be loop A. Uh, that's not going to work so well. <laughs> okay, this one's actually a lot more complicated for stupid reasons. So you see we're kind of off. Um, and there's no modulo operator to check, or no parity bit operator to check should the first one be white or black. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is have a little module over here, um, move accumulator right. Add one. I'm sorry. Now we're going to start by moving one into the accumulator. Now here we go. Move zero right, move one right. That's all it's going to do is alternate between uh, zero and three. jump greater than zero loop. Um, now we see, oh, well it's off by a little bit. Um, so I do want to do some loop unrolling here, uh, just for speed. See that fills pretty quickly. Uh, I could have it fill even quicker. So you see that alternates colors. Um, now what I need to do is at the end of a cycle like that, offset us by one. 
and that's great and all, but we can do better. Just do a little bit more loop unrolling. Uh, let's see, do I miss the end? No, actually this works. 1448. Now, why couldn't I just do this thing with the other picture? Why was my other loop so complicated? Um, it's kind of amazing. We've accumulated or left. So where am I using that value? Oh, zero and starting y coordinate. Wait, how fast does this fill? 1448. That's faster than my other program. I don't understand how. Um, when we looked at this one. Yeah, this took 1799 cycles. Um, so going to copy one of these. Which one of these are we copying? This one. Uh, I'm going to copy that into slot 3. Um, except I don't need to do move left down because we know every one of these needs to be white. So just keep moving 3 down over and over. Um, At 16 in my accumulator. Oh, whoops, I don't need this offset anymore. Fifteen fifty-two. Um fifteen fifty-two definitely beats seventeen ninety-nine. No question, this is faster. Um I think if I change this to 3, I miss out on something. Yeah. Uh, so, 4 times 9, if I have that right. 14, 16. Yeah, 4 times 9 is that many. Uh, it's about as good as this is going to get, I think. What's the record in terms of this? The record is, I guess, 1416. I can't really tell from the graph. That's pretty cool, though. It uses two nodes, although my personal record is one node. Um, and my record, instruction-wise, is 11. So this is kind of... This rasters the image in a way where you're just spitting out parts of it that you've already pre rendered. Um, I don't think I can do better than that. Or at least it would be really hard to do better. Um, you, one could make this faster with more complicated programs that would say. I'm going to print the uh, value 3 so many times, and then I'm going to print a minus 1 and whatever, but um, yeah, that's sufficient. Uh, let's go back to the segment list. Exposure Mask Viewer. Woo! Read an x value, read a y value, read a width, a height, draw a rectangle. Okay. So, I'm going to first start by completely ignoring what it suggests. Um, move left down. And do this one, two, print that twice. 
Um, go three down. Uh, move left to nil. Three down. Move negative one down. And you see that I've got spots showing up on here, but not complete rectangles. So I got the spots. Now the goal is obviously print out the whole rectangle, not just the spot. So let's focus on just one part of that. Um, so you got an x, a y, a width, and a height. Um, So I think first thing is I'm going to need to, well, no, width and height are OK. So um, I do want to reverse width and height, I think. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, so I need to break this up into multiple lines. Yeah, we're breaking this into multiple lines. Move up into the accumulator. Um, save it. Move up into the accumulator. Um, okay. It's x, y, width, and height. Um, so we got an x value and a y value. Um, Move up to the right, move up to the right, because we don't care. The first two are just going to set our pointer wherever it needs to go. Um, hmm. This is actually tricky, now that I think about it. Yeah, no, I don't want to. I, I see the general outline of what I need to do. I don't want to bother with this one at the moment. Histogram viewer. Read a value from in. Draw many, a line that many units uh, long. Uh, yeah, now I see what you're supposed to do. That's funny. It says long, it means vertically. Yeah, that sounds entertaining. So yeah, 8, 10, 10, 13, 15, whatever. You, you get the picture. That's pretty funny. Um, just because that's not how at all this protocol works. Uh, Let's look at the signal window filter. Read values from in, write the sum of the last three values to out.3 and sum of the last five to out.5. Assume prior in values of zero. Okay. Well, I mean, the obvious solution, well, no. Yeah, you want to keep a running total, basically. Note that you have two stack memory nodes you can use. Um, just in case keeping a running total is tricky. Uh, yeah, this game is getting complicated. For sure. Sequence sorter. Sequence indexer. Holy moly. 
Sequence reverser. Let's start with the simple one. Oh, yeah, this one. When I get into a groove working on this machine, it feels like I'm in the presence of something. Another a being that understands me. Forget all about life that drags me down. I want to be a tessellated intelligence. Take inputs, process. Take inputs, process. Take inputs, process. Perceive, understand. Yeah, so... Oh. So stack memory node feeds into this box. That's interesting. Oh, this is a one-way feed, though. Now, it's going to randomly read values out of the stack, but who knows what it's going to write to it. Um, move um, up, down. So we see the stack never has time to accumulate values when used in such a manner. Um, oops, I hit the wrong key. Move up, down. I'll move up to accumulator. Um, if the value is zero, huh? Yeah, what happens if I do this? So, no cycles. I mean, everything's completely idle because the stack's empty. How many numbers can be held in the stack, I wonder? In any event, reversing things on a stack using these kind of operations, it's probably no harder than it is for a real program, but it's not an easy task. Take all the values that are in this stack and reverse them. Okay. Try it this way. Move up into the accumulator. Move accumulator right. Move accumulator down. And move up right. Oh, I'm sorry. Move up into accumulator. Um, And if our accumulators um, jump not equal to zero, start. Otherwise, move zero to the right. Or move one to the right. So you see, this allows me to pick values off of there. Um, move one to the right. Move right, kind of nil. Well, the timing of that doesn't matter, does it? Um. Hmm. I get it, though. You want to put some kind of special value at the start or end of a sequence. Um. So 
I kind of get it. I guess a stack memory node. Oh, okay. The stack actually reverses everything for you. That's extremely useful. I have to take it all back now. Um, this is just an exercise in learning how to use a stack. Um, so we want to move zero onto the stack. up into the accumulator, move the accumulator right. Actually, all this needs to do is just move up to the right, because each sequence is going to be zero terminated. Um, start with a no op, just because. Move uh, Actually, yeah. This is going to be the thing that puts the zero at the start. Okay. So we start each sequence with the zero. And if um, move up into the accumulator, um, zero. Uh, we want to at that point we want to just read everything out of the stack, and then write a zero back when we're done. Move one up. How do we know when we're done? Because uh, there's a zero at the start of the sequence. Huh. Yeah, you have to use the stack as a way to signal when sequences start and end. Um, Move accumulator back up. So that puts it back on the stack after reading it. Um, and then say jump not equal to zero back to the start. Um, And if we have a zero value, then we need to pop the zero off the stack, uh, move up to nil, and what do we do next? Um, I kind of sort of see how this works. We want to take whatever's in the accumulator, put it on the stack. Let's start there. Move accumulator up. Um, move accumulator. I don't know. So accumulator retains the value. We're going to have to have some kind of zero condition. Jump not zero, start. Let's 
start move uh, up into the accumulator. Um, Okay. So here we need to move up into the accumulator. These need to take turns reading and writing from the accumulator is basically what it comes down to. Um, move right. to uh, save or swap, doesn't matter. Okay, and then move right into the accumulator. Hmm. Let's just plux the zero out from the stack, which indicates that it's time to start filling the stack. Uh, loop. So we're going to start this actually with a no op. Um, move. Actually, yeah, move accumulator to the right. Um, jump, not zero, back to loop. It's definitely giving me some timing constraints here. Let's just start this with tons and tons of no op operations. Um, just so things work the way they should. This isn't right either. Um, move up, accumulator value. I don't know, one of these has to happen before the other. So we're going to pop the value off the stack and put it back into the stack. Um, okay, I get it, I get it. This kind of architecture is really weird. I see what it would take to do this. I don't feel like typing it out at the moment. Multiply values, spread the product to out. <laughs> okay. I mean, using the stack memory node here would be kind of cheating, but it's doable. Um, move up, right, move left, down. Oh, hang on. So, I 
move up, down, move up to the right, move left to the right. Uh, actually, this is where the multiplication could take place. Oh. There's nothing saying that the values are going to be positive values. So what, what possible boundary condition could I use? Yeah, no, using a stack is ridiculous for this. Um, just because I don't have a safe boundary value. So, anyhow. Um, there's fun stuff here. What other achievements do I have yet to earn? Signal comparator. Use uh, solve signal comparator without using conditional instructions or without using the most popular ones. Uh, where's signal comparator? I haven't earned this achievement yet. I'm going to give it a try. Here it is. Solve this without using. Um, jump instructions. <laughs> Read a value from in. Um, write 1 to g if it's greater than 0. Write 1 to e if it's equal to 0. Write 1 to l if it's less than 0. This is a programming game. It's designed to drive people insane, or for people who are already insane, to give them something to enjoy. I kid. Um, it's, uh, oh no, it's an interesting challenge. It's a puzzle game. What's not to enjoy about it? So when a 1 is not written to an output, instead write a 0. So you want to take a value from the column in and print out in columns G, E, and L, is that value greater than, equal to, or less than zero? And the special Steam achievement you get here is um, solve this puzzle without using the jump instructions. Um, so yeah. or without using conditional jumps. Right? So yeah, solve this without using JGZ, JLZ, JEZ, or JNZ. Um, which is, I admit, sounding like quite a challenge here. It's just focus on one of these for a moment. So if I want to write a 1 if a value is equal to 0. Yeah, let me just assume that somehow I got a value in memory here. And I want to write 1 whenever that value is 0. And I want to write 0 whenever uh, that value is not 0. Um, how do I do such a thing? I wonder, could I somehow reduce a value to be minus 1, 0, or 1 by the time it gets down here? It's a little tricky to do that without using a special jump instruction. Let me check the manual one more time. Um, So we have an accumulator, a backup of um, memory storage, temporary memory storage. Uh, I've got special um, all right, my instructions that I can choose between are the no op do nothing instruction, the move instruction, which takes a value and moves it around this system. 
um, swap, which exchanges this temporary accumulator or temporary memory with the accumulator. Save, which takes the accumulator and backs it up. Um, basically, I have all the functions of a four function calculator. You know the one that has the memory add, memory subtract sorts of things. I have pretty similar choices here. Um, This is tricky. Wonder what the deal is. So there's a JRO command, uh, which says I'm always going to jump to some instruction by offset. Um, I don't know. This seems extremely difficult. Let me take a look at uh, my working example for a uh, signal comparator. So this is how you're typically supposed to do it, is compare the value uh, to being greater than, less than, or equal to zero. And if I just want to step through this and observe it, see these are the commands that get executed, and the appropriate ones and zeros get printed. It appears that the input values are restricted to the domain 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. So, as long as that's the domain of valid values, um, yeah. I might not need so many conditional instructions, so... So let's start here. Here we say move left into the accumulator. Let's try this differently. What if I say I want to um, move 3 into the accumulator and then add left. Okay. And then I want to jump based on the accumulator value. Um, actually, this one's not going to be so bad here. So if my value is less than zero, I want to print a one. Um, So, okay, so oh, in fact, some of these could be, yeah, some of these could be pretty simple. So there's minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, minus three. Actually, this one's actually, this one's trickier than I thought. Um, so instead of adding the value from the left, I want to subtract the value from the left. Um, 
So three, two, one. Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, I need to save my value and swap. Move three into the accumulator, add the value from the left. Um, jump relative based on instruction. Okay. Wait, can I jump? I can't do so based on the... Uh, I can't jump based on the value of the backup register, which would be awesome if I could. I get it, I get it. So, minus two, minus one. We need to move one down, saying this is less than that. Else, move zero down. Um. Okay, and here we need to say start versus loop. Um, actually, I just need to call these start and end. get it. So I'm missing something here. Let's try this entirely again. Move 3 into the accumulator and add the value from the left. Um, I, I don't think I can do this. JRO back. Yeah, I can't jump based on the backup register. I can only jump based on... Oh. Hang on, this adding three thing could be done way earlier. Like, uh, over here. Move three into the accumulator. Add three to up. That's where I could do it. So that's my extra register. Um, JRO, jump relative. Um, based on the value of left. Right. So I have to get all my boundary conditions correct, but I think I'm almost there. So my instructions are going to be, it's going to be five of these things. Um, so if we are less than zero, then Our offset's going to be one or two instructions, uh, where we add one, two, so instructions off by so one, two, three, four, five, move accumulator down. That should at least get me the right value in that column. So yeah, less is always correct.
That's good. Okay, now let's try it in this column. Um, greater than. Here we want to um, do something special. So here for greater than zero, um, so what do we do? We're going to move left into the accumulator, move the accumulator to the right, Actually, why don't I just do this? Move left, right, um, which means I have to print this more than once. Probably going to want to do that a couple of times. Okay, so we propagate our value. Um, do it once for now. Okay, and then um, move zero into the accumulator. Ah, but here we want to move one into the accumulator. So again, we don't need any conditional jumps or loops or things. Um, So that should also work for the greater than column. Right, so greater than is perfect, less than is perfect. Um, where things get a little bit tricky is this column, where we want to say if, we're, if we have an offset that puts us in this middle instruction, only then should we be printing a 1. In other cases, we need to be printing a zero. That's tricky. Um, hmm. So I think we're equal to zero if we're neither greater nor less than zero. Um, so this is actually going to be <laughs> um, I'm going to move one into the accumulator. Um, jump relative based on accumulator position. Uh, for actually move zero in. Add one, and then move the accumulator down. Um, oh, that's interesting too. The the check for equality is really complicated. Um, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this routine um, To the accumulator. Um, that doesn't cut it either. Darn it. This is tricky. What a complicated game. So I was going to say, like, if we're greater than zero, um, I mean, yeah, I need some way to model this tri state logic. Um, 
move left to right. Um, I'm not sure how to do some magic here. Okay, so this is going to be entirely incorrect. Why am I even frozen here? How did I get stuck? Just copy this routine here and run it. I'm still stuck. Oh. Right, because this doesn't need that particular move command. I gotta say, the little bing noise is a nice touch. How am I mistaken here? Um, I think that's how I'm mistaken. I'm uh, still missing half of my numbers somehow. Um, here, let's just do that. Um, Okay, so our greater and less than checks are absolutely correct. It's just the zero or equality check is not correct. Um, and this is where things are a little tricky. So, how do I check if something is exactly equal to zero without doing a conditional jump? Um, see a way to optimize this. Um, I don't see a way to... Uh, it's tricky. I see what they're trying to model. Um... Here, let's take this instruction set, copy it there. Um, say we're going to move zero down. Um, I didn't even use this start label here, so let's get rid of the start label. That label is just serving to confuse the picture. Um, Here is where I actually need the start label. I'll just say start or S. Um, jump S. End. I'll just say E. So this is a really inefficient way to implement um, <laughs> okay. really super hyper inefficient way to implement um, a conditional jump. 
There we go. So I'm missing something here. Move left to right. Um, oh, I don't need to move one to accumulator. Uh, that's unnecessary now. We don't need an accumulator there. jump based on the value in the accumulator. This is, this is still lagging behind somehow. I'm failing to, to output when I should output. Um, This is also incorrect. All right. There we go. So we're going to jump to Z when we're equal to zero. There we go. Uh, not entirely correct. I've got. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Um, so, where am I missing something? Move left into the accumulator and move it to the right. Our value is minus two or minus one. Um, so if we're not equal to zero, print zero and exit. Jump in. Yeah, so this is what we were missing the whole time. What a silly, silly mess. Yeah, now that's what's going on. I see it now. So this is the fastest way, um, I think. Let's just run it the way it was. Yeah, so without any conditional instructions, I was able to finish this in 373 cycles. Uh, it could do a lot better. So... Uh, uh, uh. Jump in, jump in. A lot of jumping. Three hundred sixty seven cycles. Could I do better than three sixty seven? Probably. Um, which one of these is the bottleneck, by the way? This is idle 15%. This is idle 2%. I think this one is just constantly running. And I think this is our bottleneck, actually.
Um, so, uh, I don't know. Some of these are constantly running, right? You see, this has an idle time that's close to 2%. This is about 15% and about 23% idle. So this guy is the guy holding everybody back. Um, so if I could make this guy more efficient, uh, this whole routine would finish faster. So for greater than zero, right? Um, so for g greater than 0, we want to jump to the end. Um, if not greater than 0, OK. Not, 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 greater, greater. Now that's the correct logic. Um, however, uh, there's a better way. There we go. So not greater, not greater, not greater, greater, greater. Are both going to print a one? Um, I think that's about as good as that's going to get. All right, so greater got this wrong. Oh, because I'm printing the damn value twice. 325 cycles. So that's better than our 370 something that we had. Can I do better? Um, so which one's idle the most? This is 12%, this is 19% idle. This has lots of do-nothing operations. Um, in fact, can I see any of these lagging behind? It's not exactly visible, but... Um, all right. So I don't need to do any of the stuff with the accumulator here. I just need to say um, jump based on the left. OK, so our logic this time is going to be um, Checking for is this not? Uh, in fact, I don't need this jump here, I just need that as a placeholder. Um, are we less than zero? Are we not less than zero? This is exactly wrong. If we're not less than zero, we need to... Uh, okay, there we go. Let's try that. 312. That's my record. Um, or at least with this one it is. My, my record with a different one that actually uses conditional jumps. 
It's obviously faster because I didn't have to write my own jump routine. But if you were going to go write your own jump routine, this would be the way to do it. Or a way to do it. I'm glad I don't have to write my own jump routines all the time. Alright, so I got the Steam Achievement. That was fun. Uh, what Steam Achievement do I want to try to get next? Write Sequence Reverser without using a stack memory node. That looks painful. Um, well, I think I've done well. I've got half the achievements in this game. It's a really challenging game. So with that, I think I'm going to switch to a different Steam game. And we're going to enjoy that. So just one moment, I'll be back.